Tech Talks webinar. As you can see, I am not Will Murphy. I'm Ryan Canarak in the uh, New Jersey office. I'm joined, as usual, by my colleague in the Burbank office, Kat Cobell. Hey there, Ryan, not Murphy. Oh, <laughs> oh we miss you. <laughs> okay. So today's webinar is going to be all about the layout view. Uh, yes, that is our kickoff topic. As usual, you can always ask questions about other items at the end that can be related to the layout view, they can be related to anything else. Kat is going to be watching your questions and will uh, pop in when necessary. Uh, also, if we don't get to your questions, remember you can always email support at actlighting.com. And, and just as a little uh, uh, preface as well, there are a lot of questions this particular webinar, so if we don't get to it, um, again, feel free to send us a, a note or um, we'll hopefully get to it in another webinar. Cool. All right. So let's jump right into it. We're talking about layout views. I like to describe layout views essentially as a sandbox where you can do whatever you want. You can put fixtures into it, you can put channels into it, but you can put presets, macros, groups, whatever. So um, we're here in our standard learning the ropes training show. We kind of have a demo layout view here. Uh, we got some fixtures as kind of a, sort of a top view, right, with our washes, our spots, our beams. Uh, we got some groups here on the right. We got a couple of macros and some presets here, right? So essentially you can, as I said, do whatever you want. You can place fixtures in here. You can select them. So I could say give me those, maybe bring them to full. You can see I have the fixtures, I have a little uh, icon here with what they're doing, maybe change the color, and so forth. So let's kind of get into how you build a layout. So first off, uh, obviously you don't necessarily have this view built, so I'm going to start off with a clear screen. Uh, there are two windows in particular that we are looking for. So here I'm going to go to the Pools tab and open up a layout pool. This is where your layout objects are actually stored. And then in the rest of the screen, I'm going to go to the other tab here and open up a layout view. And while we're at it, I'm going to store this as a new view. Okay. Uh, so general, general rules are channels and fixtures get stored into a layout and everything else gets assigned. So I can see some of my channels or my fixtures here. So I could say fixture 101 through 112, please. Right, that's my spots. And I'm going to store that into a new layout. Okay, and there we go. I have all 12 of my fixtures here. In the layout view here, uh, kind of quick going through the buttons at the top here. So this button all the way on the right hand side. This is where, this is what's telling the layout view which of my layout objects to look at, right? So right now I'm set to link selected, which means whichever layout I choose over here for my layout pool, that's what it's going to look at. I can also choose any specific layout that it will always look at regardless of what I've chosen over in this window. So we're going to leave that there. Uh, set up here, right? This allows me to actually move around and adjust my layout. Zoom to fit, right? If I move things around and whatnot, uh, this button here, select and move, that changes whether I'm, when I press and drag, am I shifting the layout or am I selecting a range? Uh, if we go into the yellow ball for our options up here, uh, the, these tabs, pool element defaults, I can assign. Uh, so when I, for fixture and channel, this is what happens, how my channel and fixture boxes look. How big are they? What's their font? What are these fields are they showing? This pool element is for everything else. So as I said, I can assign or store channels and fixtures. And maybe we could say we got some 
uh, color presets over here. So if I wanted to put these color presets in, color presets are preset type 4, so 4.11 through 15. So I could come in here and I could say assign preset 4.11 through 4.15 and then tap directly into my layout. I've got my presets in there right now. Right, so the uh, pool element defaults, this is how these are going to look. Uh, just kind of, well, let's see, what are the other options? You layout data, this grid is how big are the grid lines in the background. Snap grid, if I turn on snap always, snap always yes, then the snap grid is where are my fixtures snapping to? Uh, you know, how, what's my resolution for how I'm arranging my fixtures? Uh, I like to keep that relatively small. Background, this is, I can set a background color other than black. Whoa! I think we're going to leave that at black for now. Uh, we'll kind of we'll come back to some of these other ones here. Uh, so as I said, channels. I'm gonna keep. I'm probably gonna say this a bunch of times just to remind you here. Channels and fixtures get stored. Everything else gets assigned. If I wanted to put some more fixtures in here, maybe these washes, I could say 201 through 212. Oops. Fixture 201 through 212 and store maybe over here. And I'm going to merge these in. Now if I say zoom to fit, I've got all of that stuff. Now let's kind of come to some of our arrangement tool options over here. So I've got these, all these fixtures in here and they're just kind of thrown in wherever right now. So if I wanted to kind of lay them out in a way that makes more sense, I could do this manually and just say, oh, that one's going to go there, and this one is going to go here, and this one's going to go here. So I could do that. But we also have some other options down here under Arrange. So I could select these 12 fixtures, and if I hit Arrange, I have these various options. So Line, right, I could just say... My, now my encoders are the start and end X, so that's left to right, right? So start here, end over here. I've also got start and end Y, so I could say I want to do that. And then once I'm happy with how that looks, I hit apply. So now i got those pictures in a nice line. I could do the same with a circle. So radius start, maybe I'll shrink that in a little bit. Radius delta is now going to give me a spiral if they're right, essentially if they're not the same. And then angle start and end. If I say 0 to 360, that gives me a full circle. If I increase that, I get an overlap. If I decrease it, I get an arc. And then I could say apply. Rectangle, how many rows, how many columns. So I could say I want more or less rows, more or less columns. I did that in reverse. Uh, and then horizontal and vertical interval is their spacing here. Again, apply. Camera is an interesting one. This says instead of arranging based on some particular geometric shape, what I'm going to do instead is arrange based on a camera angle of, of my stage view. So, right, so if we come back and look at our stage view here, we have these various camera angles. So I need this to be looking at selected, right? So I could be front, left, right, top, right? There's other camera angles in here. So when I say here, arrange based on a camera, this is saying arrange all of my fixtures. Oh. Arrange all of my fixtures, fixture 101 through there we go. 
based on how they look from that particular camera angle. So if I chose, uh, say, front left, and then hit apply, and zoom to fit, this is how those 12 fixtures look from the front, oops, from the front left camera. Right, we can kind of see we get that diagonal line. If I choose to arrange based on some other one, for example, top, we can see when I choose a camera, we get a preview here, just like we did with all the others. I could say apply, and now that's all show up. Um, rotate, you're right, I'm just taking the whole thing, or whatever set of fixtures I have selected. Cancel that, scale. Uh, I can shift them. I'm not, when I, as I change scale Y here, nothing happens because it's all one row anyway. Uh, we'll cancel that. All right, so those arrange tools give us some quick, quick ways to rearrange, appropriately enough, how our fixtures are laid out. Uh, so I'm actually going to grab all my fixtures, 101 through 112, sorry, through 212, and arrange based on that top camera angle, and we'll say apply. And there we go. I got my washes, or my spots upstage, my washes downstage. I could come in here and move my presets around. I could, again, use any of my arrange tools with my presets. Uh, camera is not going to work so well since my presets don't actually show up in the stage view, but all of your others would normally. Uh, so we're done arranging. We could say we like this. Oh, I actually want this view. Can I get everything a little bigger? Uh, let's see. So that was under Arrange. We can go back to Element Properties and look at what else we have on our encoders. So layout views are, you can do pretty well with arranging them with uh, a mouse, like I am here. But the using your, uh, if you have a command wing or a real console, actually arranging these with encoders works pretty well. So uh, here, our encoders, we're looking at position, so move X and Y, so I can just select them in, move them like so, and because I have snap, my snap always still enabled, even though I'm moving them, or I'm moving them, you notice down here, if you look, they're moving by the point two that I said in my snap grid. So they're still snapping rather than just kind of moving willy-nilly. All right, so that's position. If we come here, we can look at size. So I can increase them left to right. I can increase them up down using size all. This is just grabbing both dimensions. And when you adjust the size there, yeah, there you go. Okay, and then we've also got font size if we had a bunch of text in there. Right, small. Default, big, and so forth. We'll go back to default. And then here under third one here, we got style. So we have background color. I could say, give me those. Now be, uh, we're going to take a look at a second why I'm not seeing background color. Border color. So right now that defaults to white, but I could say I want my fixture outlines to be red. And now when I selected something else, we see our board, fixture borders are now red. Text color, maybe blue if we had some other text in there. Oh, actually, it did change my selected fixture down here to blue. We come back up here and change that to blue. Now we see our text color is blue. Uh, this did not change to blue because that's not really text that's telling you an indication of your dimmer level. Uh, we could also apply icons or images to our fixtures. So maybe I don't want them to just be this box here. I want, uh, well, these are movers, so maybe I'll make them kind of have an icon there. All right. Um, we can also get a little more granular with how we're going to, we want our 
uh, objects to look. So here if we press Edit Selected, we have some more options. So show name. Uh, actually, let me change my text color back to white. That'll make it a little easier. And maybe zoom in on one of these here. Something like that. Okay, so we're going to say edit selected and show name, right, on or off. Show dimmer bar, that's the bar on the side. So if I bring up my dimmer level, you'll see them change there. Show dimmer value, that's the number down at the bottom there. Right, does that change that? Visualization. So this, if I set that to none, then it's always, remember I changed my background color to green. Right, if I say background color, um, maybe I'll make this my background color. Right, so that's when your visualization is set to none. If I change this to filled, then this will change, this will essentially just show me dimmer. And if we scroll back out so I see one of my presets, it will also show you the color. Right, so you got dimmer and color. And okay, so we'll come back into setup here and zoom back in. That's filled, and then if we change our visualization to spot, then in addition to getting color, we also get gobo. So if I bring them up here, and I could change my color again. So here if we change our preset, so I could say the yellow, and I could choose, so say this crosshatch gobo. Now if I go back to screen two, we see its color, and we see the gobo. Right, we'll come back into edit selected. So that's spot. It's one of the, probably your more common one for moving lights. For LEDs, probably doesn't matter so much. Right? You could do spot or fill. Uh, image size is how big this image we have here is. So right, small, we got big, and we got fit. Right, fit essentially says, give me the whole, fill the, uh, the object box with this image. And now just the inside of the image shows the background, right, the color and the gobo. Uh, from this edit layout element, you can also choose an image or icon the same way as you would down here. Uh, I could rotate my image. We'll leave that on zero. Uh, let's see what else. Dimmer, yeah, we got those. Uh, under sub fixture here, you can choose whether you're seeing your channel ID or your fixture ID and so forth. Um, if you have RDM notifications set up for your, uh, for your fixtures and channels, you could turn on or off whether the individual fixtures or channels were showing you those RDM notifications. Uh, we could also add some text up here. My awesome fixtures, please. And now we see our little text label up there. Okay. Uh, let's see. If you have, uh, if these settings you want to apply to all of your particular fixtures or channels, you could save that, save these settings as your default. If you modified them and said, you know what, I want to go back to my defaults, hit load from default. Okay, uh, for, so that's the edit selected for your fixtures or channels. For pool elements, such as our presets here, we have similar options, right? So I could add text, add a, add a little label up top here. We could say, uh, here, let's go back to here, so I can say, show me just a simple icon here, just a simple, right, I'm not seeing any items about the pool. Uh, and then when you're on simple, then it says, I want to see the ID, I want to see the type, I want to see the name, do or don't. Uh, let's see, if we change our background color here, instead of being gray, we could say, everybody be green, which would be a little weird, I guess, with seeing 
Hey, wait, is this a red preset or a green preset? Uh, let's see. Let me change that back to gray. Oh, preset to black. Okay, uh, image size, same thing here. You can uh, apply an image or an icon. So I can say, oh, these will be LEDs, and then I believe, oops, I need to select all these. And if I change to simple, I'll see the image or icon there. Well, we're not going to see much image rotation because it's a re it's a circular image. Nice, Ryan. Okay, and then same uh, image size here uh, under pool. So with our pool options, you may have seen this before. Uh, you can change a pool symbol from being small to large to none. Right. So here choosing these and saying setup and then edit selected under pool symbol is the same options here. And I need to be big I think there. Why cat what am I missing here? You're missing something? I had this working before. What are you trying to get back to? None. Let's try that. Why isn't big working there? Maybe am I zoomed in too, too close? Yeah, that's what it is. Zoomed in too close. Right, so now if I say edit selected, pool, no symbol, just give me the icon, or just the, uh, just the uh, title. Small symbol gives me the small symbol, the small icon in the upper right corner, and then big gives me the whole thing. Okay, uh, let's see. That's it as far as those uh, edit selected, right, give me the options here. And if we, now that we've gone through those, we can see we're seeing the same things here. So size, uh, fixture ID, channel ID type, visualization, and so forth. That's all the same options here in your defaults. Okay, so we can move on to some other types of things we can do here. Let me go clear that out. Uh, let's see. You can draw boxes in your layouts, right? So I can just say I want to put a box over here, and maybe give it. It'll be pink. Brightness, pink. There we go. And it'll give me, let's make something truly awful. Perfect. Oh, well, you can kind of see it there. Green border, pink background. Perfect. Okay, so we can do that. So that's just sort of a simple box element there. Um, now, some other things we can do with boxes. So you can draw a box around fixtures. And you may have seen if you saw our new, the new bitmap fixture uh, webinar that we did. This visualization option is where you choose how it's bitmapping. Um, or if you want to, if you didn't catch that, you can also go back to our Tech Talks playlist on our YouTube channel and our bitmap fixture tutorial is there. Okay, um, we also have this option for group select. So if group select is on, then when I come out of setup mode and just click anywhere in the box, it selects all the fixtures in the box. If I have group select off, I can click in here all I want, it's not gonna select anybody. Right, and then I can still drag and select the pictures I want. Okay, what else do we got in here? Uh, again, you can do images or icons. Uh, you can add text. So I could say these are my spots. Ta-da! Okay, 
Uh, let's see, you can also just draw a straight up text box. Color, color a presets. Sweet. Cool. Um, again, down here while you're in setup, Choosing between select and move here is the same as toggling between select and move down here. Okay, uh, let's see. Some other options in our layout view here. Uh, under layout data, so we saw uh, grid, snap grid, snap always background. Marker, if I have that set to yes, then when I bring fixtures up in the programmer, or you, you, essentially you're seeing all the same markers down here that you would see in the fixture sheet. So if I store this to Q and then play back, again we see those same kinds of markers. If I chose a preset, then I'll see the cyan bar that I would normally see for preset, and so forth. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, fast call, so normally when you select a, when you choose a preset, you would, uh, tapping it once, if you have no fixtures selected, tapping it once would select the fixtures, tapping it again would apply it. With fast call, you just click it once, and regardless of who selected, the preset just applies to everybody that it possibly could. Okay, so you can turn that on or off there. Pool playback. Uh, this allows you to play sequences directly from the layout view. So I could, uh, let's see, I could assign sequence one, which is this one that I just wrote. I could sign that here. And if I turn everything off and I have no pool playback, then tapping that is essentially just selecting the fixtures that are in there. But if I say pool playback, now I can click on it and it's running. Right, You can kind of see it running there. And clicking on it again opens up the ex edit executor window. But if we were on direct action playback, then this is essentially just an executor button, the same as one of these buttons down here. All right, so you can put sequences directly in layouts as well as fixtures and presets and macros and so forth. Select layer, this is which, uh, what layer am I looking at for my fixtures? So value layer says only show me what's happening on the value layer here. If I have effects running here, so if I said those and maybe uh, running this color, rainbow color effect, everybody loves rainbows, right? If I'm running this rainbow color effect and I had a color, a heart color in here. I think this is what I want to show you. Yes, so now I'm looking at the value layer, and since the value layer is saying white, I'm seeing white here. Right, but we can see, since I have markers turned on, we can see, oh, I have an effect running. Maybe that should be telling me something, so I could say instead of looking at values, oh, show me output. Okay, uh, symbol features, uh, if you have with, if it says with dimmer, then you'll only see the color and or the gobo if the dimmer is at 100, or if the dimmer is, is if the dimmer is above zero, I should say. Right, if I brought my dimmer level down to zero, the fixture sheet says, oh, they're still red, I'm just not seeing it here. If you change this to always, then I'll still see the color. And if I toss in the gobo here as well, I 
can see the gobo in there as well, even though my dimmer is at zero, as can be seen by the dimmer bar here. Okay, uh, let's see, some other options under tool, double tap mode. If this is on, then a single click of your mouse or your finger if you were using a, a touch screen uh, uses this select, right? So now I'm, draw, I'm drawing a box here or drawing a big box to select pictures. But if I double click, then I can just move. Okay. That's double tap mode, cue colors. This will see the same uh, green, blue, purple, white colorings based on whether a value that you would see in the, in the tracking sheet or the picture sheet for your selected executor. Zoom bar, that's just as it's visible on the side here or not. Zoom encoder, if that is on, then you can use your screen encoder to zoom in and out regardless of whether the zoom bar is visible. Or my horizontal scroll bar, right? My left to right scroll bar down here. Is this visible? Is this visible? And so forth. Uh, am I, what am I allowing myself to edit? Everything, just fixtures, just my presets, the macros, just my text and text boxes and just rectangles for bit mapping or for um, uh, group select. And then as with everything else, just which title, bu title buttons are visible up here. I think that's sort of our basic layout setup options. Kat, did I miss any of the basic stuff? Uh, the only basic thing I can think of is definitely talking about cameras a little bit more. Ah, good point. Okay, so let's see. In my stage view here, we can see I have uh, sort of a wall of LEDs upstage. So if you wanted a layout view to look the same as that, to show you those fixtures, right? So we could select those fixtures. So that's uh, 501 through 600. And those are my LEDs there. I could store that to a new layout, and they just all came in in a line. So I could come in here and set up, and I could say arrange, and I could do a rectangle with 10 rows and 10 columns. So that was one thing I forgot to show you. With rectangle, you can say horizontal first or vertical first. Uh, so I could do it this way and then apply. And great, I've got a... I've got my grid here. You could do it that way. Another way you could do it is using the camera angle again, right? So we if we said camera, and I want these to look the same way they do here from my front view. So set up, arrange, camera, top, nope. I want it to be front, apply. And now there they are. If I bring them to full, I could uh, turn off markers. I could set my uh, border color to something dim so that I can still kind of see them when they're not on, but the border color isn't so distracting. Right, you can kind of still see them there. But now I grab them, bring them to full, and make them, oop, make them a color. I'll see them in there. Uh, if we open up our color picker and, sure. Right, so you can kind of see the, all the colors there as you would. So that's for, that's easy with uh, just like a wall of LEDs, but let's say, I actually patched uh, a BI, one BIK20. It's just here at the origin right here, down zero, zero, zero. But say I want to see the layout of those pixels or the arrangement of those pixels in my layout view. Well, I could select my BI. So that's, uh, let's see, 601, store it here into a layout. And oh, I got 
all 37 pixels plus the one main module. Again, all in a line, but we have our nice camera arrangement tool. So I can come in here to arrange camera. This one, yeah, we can say top and apply and zoom to fit. And we can see the arrangement of our pixels there. This larger box is the main module. I could say, you know what, maybe I don't want that box. So I'm just going to say delete you. And now I just have my pixels in there. Now, as, you know, if you added a bunch of other stuff in here, right, you can see my grid is, my grid of one is, uh, well, you can see these pixels are very small. So I could say scale, and I'm going to scale all of them to kind of, Fan them out, apply. Now if I say zoom to fit, they're scaled much bigger, but they're still small boxes, so we can come back here to element properties. Go to position, nope, size two of three, and say size all. And now, there you go, I got a nice layout of my BI pixels. Uh, we can get rid of all of this other extra labeling here. If we didn't want to see that, we just want to see what our pixel, exactly what our pixels are doing in terms of color and intensity. So I could say, I don't, no name, no dimmer bar, no value, uh, sub-fixture, turn all that off, please. Uh, we could come back here to border color, make these kind of just a very, very dim here. So now, when I clear out, right, you can kind of see them there. If we take off the grid, it'll be a little more obvious. So if you, uh, if you want your grid lines to disappear, just set one of them to zero. All right, so now we can see our pixels there. If I said 601 minus 6, oops, 601 minus 601.1, that's just my pixels. I can bring them up. Now in this particular layout view, I still have markers turned on, so I could turn off markers, and now I won't even see that red bar. Right? And if you wanted to, you could, uh, we could maybe change our background here to be slightly, slightly non-black. Right? So now you can kind of see your pixels standing out against the background. Uh, oh, I thought of something else I wanted to talk about, which was an, another use for these boxes right here in setup. Um, let's go back to this one. So we talked about boxes, right? You can uh, just fill them with a color. You can make them group select, uh, which I think actually that one is not, but it should be in that case. Uh, another uh, use for boxes is if you wanted to uh, import custom images into your layout view. So I'm going to draw a box here and I'm going to say image and icon. No, I want an image. Well, I could load any one of these custom images, but you know what? I have a, I took a screenshot of my plot from Vectorworks or MA3D or whatever. And so I'm going to load image and I'm going to import an image from my USB stick here. And that's the image that I want. Okay, so now edit selected image. I can see my custom image in there. Great, so this is my background. This will be my background now and I could Come over here, and remember my fixtures are laid out based on uh, my camera view. So since and since this just this screenshot just came directly from MA3D, if I expand my size here, I think that's. Pretty much, nope, I need to expand it some more. We can make this a little bigger. Oops, that's, 
There we go. Now if I go back to here, right, so I can just kind of uh, tweak that around. I could shrink it a uh, little x, y, right, so the image is basically stretched or, sh or squeezed based on the size of the box. So come in here to setup and maybe make it a little shorter. Something like that, maybe. That looks pretty good. Right, I've I scaled these up a little bit so that these are these are no longer the same shape. But in a sense, essentially, right, you could import an image of your plot and then lay pictures on top of it. So now you can say, oh yeah, here's my plot, and give me that picture and that picture and that picture. Bring them to full, make them this color. Make sense? Cat, what I miss? I don't think you missed a single thing. Um, <laughs> I think now is a really good time to uh, get to some questions. We are running over time here, but I think if we uh, extend this uh, puppy to an hour, we can get through a good chunk of these. Oh, How's wow. that sound? Yeah, sorry about that. Didn't realize I was taking so long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's layout views. There's so much to talk yeah, about. Yeah, there's so, so much to talk about. Let's get to right, these layout it, view yeah. questions. I have a good one for you here, Ryan. Um, no hey Ryan, can you copy or move layout elements between different layouts? Copy or move layout elements. Uh, well, fixtures and well, any of your pool objects or uh, fixtures or channels obviously you can because they're outside, right? So I could say, uh, give me these fixtures. And then store them into this one instead. Store here, merge, and now they're back in there. And based on my default settings, they get stored in there. Uh, it could be the same with uh, uh, with pool elements, right? Macros, presets, groups, etc. Uh, as far as images or boxes, maybe that's more of the question, Kat. Uh, that part, I don't know. We can try it though. So I could say uh, copy this thing at layout uh, three, merge, does that do anything? I don't know. I don't think so. I do believe you can copy layouts, though. I mean, copy this yeah, layout, yeah. this can, layout. Right, so I could say take I Take those elements. Yeah, I could certainly say copy this here. And now I have everything here, and I could just delete out anything I didn't want. So, like, delete this box, and delete that one, and delete you, and so forth. Uh, by the way, in case you didn't know, if you wanted to put layout into your command line using the uh, keypad, it's... Oh, that's a, uh, yeah, we'll put that there. It's MA group. MA group puts layout into your command line. In case you were wondering. All right, that's cool. Fun um, where are all these settings saved, Ryan? Is this saved within my show file? Is it saved within my user profile? Where where are all my layout settings saved? Well, if we come in here to setup and look under window settings. Now, defaults, layout defaults, right? So we have all these options here. And everything in this tab is stored with the user profile. So these layout defaults are stored with your user profile. So they'll also be stored with the show file since your user profile is also stored in the show file. But they're specific to each user. Cool. Cool. Uh, What's next? Al along the same lines of uh, copying layout elements, we do seem to have a couple questions about cloning layouts and cloning into layouts. Um, so do you want to just give a brief overview of maybe, um, you know, I added some fixtures into my show and I want to clone and I want those also in my layout views? Sure. So let's see. Let's say I patched one BI here, but I could say, let me just uh, throw another one in here. Uh, sure, 6.2, whatever. Yeah, great. Okay. 
So I could say uh, in our cloning menu here, I could say fixture 601, fixture uh, 602, if I could type. Right, so 601 is my source, 602 is my destination. When I say prepare, I have all these options here, right, sequences, groups, presets, world effects. I also have an option for layouts. So I could say all items to none. I don't want to clone any of this stuff. I just want to clone all layouts. Or I can choose which layout. So I could say clone this fixture just in this layout. And then I say clone. I have options here, low priority, merge, or overwrite. There's fixtures not doing anything here, so I'll just merge that in. Now when I close, when I clone out of my closing menu, uh, we can see 602 is here. We come into setup. The pixels are already arranged right there, and I can just, oh, I can just move them around. Make sense? I think Kat, is that uh, I think that answers that question. Yeah, awesome. Right, you can um, you can specify which layouts your fixtures are getting cloned into using that cloning. Absolutely. Menu. Any other cloning questions, of course, can be covered in our our cloning webinar. Um, but that was a good little layout um, discussion. Well, I'm right there. Uh, cool. We seem to be getting so we seem to be getting a lot of questions about uh, the management of layout views. Like why why would I use a, a macro or how do I optimize my layout views? Uh, I would like to take a second to talk about uh, that, like macros and layout views. Okay. Well, just in terms of optimizing, the idea with a layout view is getting everything that you need into one location, right? So here, right, rather than having, say, you know, over here a groups pool and over here a preset, you know, a bunch of preset windows and, oh, you, know, you know what, maybe I need to toggle back and forth between my macro views to grab specific things, right? The idea is just give me everything all in one window. I can arrange it however I want. So, right, for example, in this one we've got We've got individual fixtures we can choose, right? That one or that one or that one. But we've also got, give me the groups. We've got some presets. Obviously, you can build whatever you want into here. Um, so that's, that's just sort of the idea of what you're doing with a layout view. So with, in terms of macros, it's kind of what, do, what macros do I want to have handy often, right? So I could say have a macro here for... This one in particular is uh, clear selection or clear all. So I, you know, if I had uh, group two full, I could just reset my selection there, but keep everything in the programmer, right? So it's what what do I want to have handy? Um, let's see. In terms of how you set them up, it's really uh, it's it's really what do you want your layout to do? Right? How it, how how do you set it up in the or how you set it up is going to work best is going to depend on your particular workflow. So we can't really prescribe. You must always set your layouts up this this way, this way, and this way, because we don't know what your particular scenario is going to call for. Does that make sense, Kat? I'm not sure uh, what more uh, how how much further we want to go with that. Uh, no, I think you you brought up a really good point that layout views are definitely um, very customized to to your show, to your workflow, and what you want to accomplish with it. Obviously, a layout view for you know a show on a full size versus a show on a PC, you're looking at like two completely different usage um, right. for it. Or a show on a full size with with 200 lights versus a show on a full size with 50 lights. Right, right. Right. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. And yeah. you know, a show for a rock show versus a theater show versus a corporate event, it's gonna to be totally different. All right. Uh, so kind of, sort of sticking to layouts, but not really. Uh, image sizes. There's a couple different questions here about um, what's the image pool uh, sizing um, guidelines. And where can I find those, Ryan? Well, I believe there is. In the help manual, image, oops, 
Uh, now that's for the adding a background image. Yeah. No, there it's here somewhere. I'm pretty sure that one is. Uh, this one. Yeah, there we go. So for images, if you want them to, if you want to use them as your for your fixtures, so instead of these predefined ones, you could build your own. So those would be use these guidelines. Um, as far as the max size, right, so this, these guidelines are actually slightly out of date. As of 3.2, the maximum size for any piece of content is 64 megabytes because it supports uh, videos now. Um, and the maximum total for the pool is 100 megabytes. Uh, notice here, right, resolutions higher than 1920 by 1080 are automatically scaled down. So your screens on a console are already less than 1920 by 1080. So generally speaking, when you're if you're making images for use in your layout view, scale the images beforehand using uh, Photoshop or Paint or whatever. Uh, scale your images beforehand based on what they're going to be doing in your layout view. So if you wanted, uh, if you were using an image like as a background like this with your rig, then that's going to be a little bigger than something where I just want an icon for this little fixture right here, right? Or this, for the fixture that's right here, an image shouldn't be, you shouldn't be using an image that's 1920 by 1080, for example, right? You can make something that's 10 pixels by 10 pixels and it would be just fine. Um, if the more the desk has to scale the image uh, by itself, right? When if you if you did choose a 1920 by 1080 image to try and use here, that's a lot of scaling that the desk has to do, which is just adding to the it's, it's adding unnecessary processing. So generally speaking, use images that are sized appropriately to the task. I think is the uh, is the general guideline there. Cool. Actually, speaking of guidelines, hey Ryan, what do you think about um, triggering cues from the layout view? Do you find that this is any different from triggering a cue just, say, sitting on an executor? Um, it shouldn't be any different. It's essentially the same, right? You're hitting a button to, you're hitting a physical hard key to trigger a cue, you're tapping a button on the screen to trigger a cue, essentially the same, you're executing, they're both executing syntax, so the syntax is essentially the same um, in terms of processing, there might be like, you know, a microsecond difference here or there, but it's it's not going to be noticeable. Cool. So, I think that answers, yeah, so it, it's, it's pretty much the same, yeah. And I'm sticking, I'm sticking to this exact topic for just one last question here, because I think this Go will, this will bring us to the end of this webinar here. All right, Ryan. I want you to use the using the layout view. How would yeah. I go about about going between two queues on a queue stack? So let's say if my first queue is red, my second queue is orange. How am I going to use my layout view to just go um, toggle back and forth between those uh, two queues there? Okay. Well, let's uh, let's create an example here. So we'll select executor 22. And we'll say uh, red, store that as Q1, yellow, store that as Q2. And this is just going to make every fixture in our entire show go between red and yellow, right? Okay, so we have this on an executor here. This is sequence two. So we could assign sequence two to our layout. Uh, here, let's, uh, which, which you you already showed that, so right. yeah, we, let's, right. let's, let's go about a macro. Right. Okay. So a macro to trigger a sequence is just it's the same syntax. So you could do this in one macro that just toggles back and forth. So we could say uh, we could say um, go to Q1 executor 22. And oops, I want to add that after. 
right? Go to Q2, Executor 22. Right, so it was red, yellow, that's not how you spell yellow. And I'm going to make the wait go instead of follow so that I can just tap the macro. So I could say that's macro 79. So uh, assign macro 79 into my layout. There we go. And now I can just tap the macro. Line one, everybody's red. Tap the macro again. Line two, everybody's yellow. Right, so you can just go back and forth that way. Uh, you could also do this with two macros. So instead of macro 79 being toggling between them back and forth, I could say delete that. This one will be red and macro 80 will be go to 2, executor 22. And this is yellow. And so now I need to assign macro 80 here as well. So assign macro 80 here. And we just need to shift that over there. And so now I can tap this macro. And my pictures go red. And I tap this macro. And my pictures are yellow. Right, so it's just executing the same syntax as you would with any other, doing it through the command line, doing it from the command cell of a queue, right? You're just saying this macro needs to go to this specific queue on this executor. Make sense? Does that, does that answer that question, Kat? I think we're good there. I think we're good there. And any other questions we can get? All right, so get there's one last quick one. I'll, I'll do one last quick one here because I feel like this comes up a lot, and you could probably, I'm sure you've seen this a ton of times as well. Sure. Um, can we do all of this via the command line? Uh, let's see. Like you everything in your layout view. So let's say arranging your layout view, do we do this via the command line? <laughs> right. So when you initially assign or store fixtures into a layout view, you can specify the X and Y placement. So you could say like uh, assign fixture, uh, not, not assign fixtures, uh, like assign um, presets. I'm just typing here rather than tapping keys on the uh, uh, Rather than keys on the command ring. So x equals 1, y equals 1.5 uh, at layout 6. So you can, you can assign, when you initially assign objects into the layout, you can uh, ch change their placement that way. However, once it's in here, you all these other options here, Right, as far as name, ID, and so forth, image, uh, size, position, etc., that is not currently accessible through the command line. It is on the wish list, though. Uh, if you, if, if it's something you really, 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 really need, uh, you can always email us, and we'll add your vote. The more votes we get, the more likely, or the higher something will move up the list. Whether or not it ever gets implemented, we don't know, but we can uh, certainly more people asking for it can't hurt. Uh, um, I think right, and yeah. we, we, we do actually want to mention that that's for the uh, North American market only yeah. there. So supportedacolighting.com is if you are in, located in North America, if you are anywhere else around the world, look up your local distributor and um, they will be happy to take your questions and uh, wishes. Cool. Uh, is that it? I think that's it for layout views for today. We're obviously going to have to pick this up uh, with a, a whole other layout view uh, webinar 2.0 uh, at a later date. But uh, wow, Ryan, that was a lot of information. Yes, <laughs> that was. Uh, remember, you can check out all our other Tech Talks webinars on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can always uh, check out our knowledge base here, support.acclinion.com. 
Uh, we have some other stuff here on our website. And uh, again, if you're in North America, if you have any questions, any questions we didn't get to today, which I'm sure there are a bunch, sorry for uh, going so in-depth, uh, wait, maybe I'm not really sorry, um, you can always email us, support at actlighting.com. Uh, I think that about does it here. Uh, happy programming. Happy programming, all.